In the course of doing research on the financial meltdown of 2008, I came across the term housing lobby or powerful housing lobby a lot, especially with respect to Fannie and Freddie, which at the point they entered conservatorship had a combined total of 46 uh, lobbyists on their payroll. So I was kind of curious as to the connection between the powerful housing lobby and the financial meltdown of 2008. And by housing lobby, I mean um, the big guys like uh, the National Realtors Association, um, uh, National Home Builders Association, Mortgage Bankers Association, and of course tons of um, smaller guys who are uh, lobbying for affordable housing. What I found was that uh, people don't seem to be that excited about the housing lobby or the powerful housing lobby, especially in comparison to the evil financial services lobby, like Goldman Sachs and Laban Brothers and those guys. I also found it kind of interesting that I went to Open Secrets, which is a website that does a great job of um, showing the totals for how much a particular congressman got or how much a particular company or industry gave. Open Secrets actually combines the industries. They combine insurance, real estate, and the financial services industry into one total in terms of how much was given. And uh, the number is, is pretty significant. I mean, it's $2 billion, but it's over 10 years, 1998 to 2008. And I have to say, I'm not really blown away by that number. Um, that's a lot of elections. That's a lot of candidates. And that's a lot of very successful firms. Do I like it that Fannie and Freddie got to, levy, got to lobby Congress when they were government-sponsored enterprises? Absolutely not. Do I like it that uh, Congressman, his staff, will write an incredibly complex piece of legislation and then, oops, there's a loophole for a particular company or market segment? Absolutely not. But lobbying, a.k.a. the right to petition your government, is a constitutional right, and we'll just have to deal. If we want to get at this issue of special interests. We need to get at this issue of government being in everybody's business all the time. If they weren't, these companies would not be spending this much time and money in DC. And if we want to get at this issue of special interests, we are going to have to flatten and streamline our tax code so that loopholes can't be auctioned off. And finally, if we want to get at this issue of special interests, then we need to get at this issue of voters continually putting in guys like Obie, Dodd, Waxman, Bennett, and Frank in Congress for generations so that they get so incredibly comfortable spending taxpayer money.